Views from the friend zone. Mom trying to beat, I'm trying to reach the end zone. You think I'm kind of sweet and you want to be friends though? It's cool though. Just don't try to play me for no fool, yo. Views from the friend zone. Mom trying to beat, I'm trying to reach the end zone. You think I'm kind of sweet and you want to be friends though? It's cool though. Just don't try to play me for no fool, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your boy Real Talk Marv. Welcome to another edition of the Views from the Friends on Podcast. Happy Sunday. We back after a brief hiatus, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, without ado, I'm going to have my team introduce themselves. Yeah, Sensei in the building right now. It's your boy, Cliff Brock. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a lot going on, you know what I'm saying? This week, you know, I want to take a quick second to be like, you know, uh, prayers and well wishes go out to um, Rick Ross. We're hoping that you know he comes through. You know, hoping that he comes through. Rick and that, Ross, yeah, yeah right? every, everything go. I heard it happened from a threesome. So I don't know. No, nah, it's it's it and the crazy thing about it is it's so it's so many different rumors on what is and what's not. Really you know what I'm happened, saying? Right? And it, it had it made me think about something. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like you know made me think about the drug culture. Like I said, the first thing I want to say is I'm not accusing what happened to Rick Ross to happen to necessarily be due to the drug culture, but we kind of know he's had health scares in the past, and before we used to think it was the weight thing, but he dropped a good almost 100 pounds, yeah. you know what I'm saying, That's and working out, and then I was thinking about Lil Wayne, yeah, and how Lil Wayne keep having seizures, and you know, Lil Wayne is skinny, it's not like he has, you know. Any health issues or anything? Yeah. Health issues that we know of, you know what I'm saying? So he did it like, no, he was doing a lot of lean. Yeah, you know, yeah. Right? So it's yeah. it's a culture kind of thing. It made me think like, you know, we need to discuss the drug culture because okay. I don't want to sound like a lame, but to me, it's just like I be thinking to myself, why isn't getting drunk off liquor and smoking a little weed, you know what I'm saying, enough? Why have this drug culture that we're in has become so popular to the point where, like, real talk. If it wasn't for the music, I wouldn't even know about all these different drugs, how people think of Xanax and all these other things for different uses. That's crazy. Kids yeah. are going into their parents, you know. Uh, medicine cabinet. Medicine cabinet yeah. and just experimenting on shit, yeah. like, you know, remixing different drugs and stuff like that. And I'm just like, yo, back in the day, it was like, drugs is whack, you know, crack is whack. And it was crazy because it's just like, you know, we was just so, like, not adamant against drug culture, but it was just like, you know, it was a weakness, right? We saw it as a weakness, people abusing drugs. Yeah, you but, use it but as now it's just out because you can't deal. Now it's just right? a cool kind of thing. So the first topic we're going to discuss is called drug culture. And the first question is, from Pusher to Papa, how has the shift in the music contributed to the culture? Because like I said, when we grew up, the musicians that we followed, the people that we followed, was hustlers. It was the hustler thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And not to say that, you know, glorifying drug dealing is a good thing, but to me it was just like, you know, a drug dealer, albeit his means was illegal, was out there trying to make money, and we kind of, you know, fantasize about this, the, the allure of making that money, taking those chances, but, you know, it was kind of like a, a point of trying to come up, but now we glorify it was a, the drug users. A, a way to get, you know, what you wanted, a and means, means to, to, to a the means end, to end, or whatever. But yeah. now, but now it's, it's just, just like, like people tell you, I'm saying he had, I'm on this, like, like <laughs> people will read to you the drugs that they <laughs> on, like it's like, cool. Like, like it's cool, you right. right? So, yeah. so the, you know, I'll repeat the question from Pusher to Papa, how has the shift in the music contributed to the culture? Have you go first, Glenn? Um, I think the music is uh, definitely influencing the, the culture and just the, the youth in general. Like, and if the if a hot artist is mentioning about what drugs he's taking, the kids are like yo, that's what's popping. Future mentioning about drugs all the time. So Percocet, Percocet, Molly, Percocet. Yeah. So it's like when uh, when your favorite rapper saying he's doing this, and even even with not just the future, but back in the day, you know, and sometimes they played a part too, like Triple Six Mafia, you talk about sipping on that scissor. Yeah, so that people was, get by, be curious and influenced scissor. by music of what they say. If somebody's popular, mention it. If Jay-Z tomorrow say tomorrow, yo, I've been on coke for 10 years, everybody <laughs> start doing coke. Because, no, no, because, <laughs> no, that's the, because it's recorded, because it's a cheat. Sometimes the music culture, they, they, the trendsetters. So if Jay-Z say, yo, I'm, I've been on coke for 10 years, get on this coke wave, 
You'll see a lot of people going, going, go, dying like flies. Because you know, when he when he put a, when he said, let's put away the button ups. I was just about to say when he said, no, no. When he oh, said put away put the jerseys, jerseys and put away the jersey the and, and go to a button up, everybody I got like did 10 it. And I, I know, I, and I know. So I was like, yo, I just I had just dropped three fifty on on a jersey. Yeah, and I'm not talking and about crazy. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the Metro and Ness, the, uh, <laughs> the, Nike, <laughs> the Nike check, the official jerseys. When Jay Z said put them back, you know, guys started wearing the button ups. So. The music culture play a big influence with the youth. You know, like future music is all about drugs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, talking about drugs. So a lot of the times somebody who's younger can't understand that it's just music. It's going to be like, yo, this is my life. And then also a lot of rappers, they're living a lifestyle like they're invincible. You get millions of dollars. So they don't know that they've been taking lean for the last three months that there's effect to it. You understand? Because mm -hmm. they're not doing their research. That's Honestly, what I'm saying. I feel like. To speak on the rappers and that that game in general, yeah, a lot of these dudes. I'm not saying they're not creative because they was able to get to a level where they succeeded because yeah. of their creativity and their minds. But I believe some of them peak and don't know where else to go, and they want to still live up to that level of success. So they need the drug to oh, kind of like put them outlet. in another space, like an outlet to yeah, put them in another space where they can still you feel know, good about themselves and make and good music, make good music, okay. right? They, so they just like, you know, it becomes necessary. They become dependent upon it. Whereas, you know, if you just smoke a little something, drink a little something, that's what you want to chill or whatever, whatever. They taking these old super duper drugs and, I, I don't and want, having you on And I don't want to be a hypocrite, right? Because the rock star lifestyle outside of our culture, hip hop culture, yeah. they've always been on drugs and stuff like that. But, you know, so, uh, what's his name? I still can't believe it. The... Uh, Guitarist who died because he. Uh, Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, Jimi Hendrix. They said when he had his, uh, in his um, sweat band or whatever, he was like, who he was on? He was on some kind of psychedelic drug. Yeah, or doing like the mushrooms and all that. Something acid. Or LSD something like that. and LSD stuff like that. The, yeah. So it's it's always been in the music. It's yeah. just never been as glorified. Like I don't even understand why you would want to like think that is cool. You know what I mean? Like it, it's it's stupid to me and. And I think back to the old, I saw it on Facebook uh, a couple of weeks ago, the old 80s commercials, remember with the Ninja Turtles? Don't do drugs, Tommy. Drugs are whack. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, the, the whole crack is whack. Like, yeah. But yeah. to me, it was just like, you know, I, growing up, I always thought like, yo, if, of course, smoking weed, drinking alcohol was the cool things. Like, if you went to crack, if you went to, you know, coke, and all that other stuff like that. Like, to me, that was a sign of, like, you being weak. Yeah. But these people make it seem like, yo, you haven't made it till you start doing these kind of things. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, you know, when you're watching a Ross or a Wayne having these kind of situations. This year alone, not 2018, but 2017, it was like three rappers that died off of um, lean. Uh, was it the lean? Lean, yeah. And lean, different drug yeah. overdoses. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And it's just like, yo. You used to have to be forced to take medicine when you was a kid. You didn't want to take that stuff. Now they have taking it like, lean is basically medicine. Yeah. It's, it's no, oxy. it's a mixture of. It's a mixture of. It's a of mixture it. of cough syrup, yeah. Sprite. Um, what else is in there? It's a, um, it's a couple of things. Because me and my basketball Jolly Rancher me and Jolly Ranchers, me and my basketball team, we looked at it, we did it one day. We missed, we all missed practice the next so day. So you tried, you tried lean before? In college. We, we did that. it one time. It wasn't I something, it was one of the yet. things where we was like, yo, let's just, we got, we was bored one day. We was like, let's try it. Yeah. Yo, that joint knocked us out for like 10 hours, yo. We missed practice and everything See? the next day. So yeah. it was like, it's crazy. So, so in sedition, like I said, I know this kind of sound like a square question. Like, why isn't the high you get off of hydro and all this different kind of weed, why is that not enough? Well, not everybody's into that. Like, you know, you got your downers, you got your uppers, and, and weed is something you smoke. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and some people don't like smoke, you know, mm -hmm. so yeah. they might go to edibles, you know, because that's THC too, but it's in a different form, whatever. Um, but these pills, I think these pills, and why so many people become addicted to these pills is because they really, like, take that pain away. You know what I mean? Not just the physical pain, but the pain you be but with life. You, you, life know, you ever met? Listen, side note: You ever messed with a chick that had, was on ecstasy before? Oh, don't give me. Yeah, I don't. I, I, you, I, you, I, listen, you listen. When, I went to school you're not supposed where, to have where sex on ecstasy. Listen, I've been to school where they they were diverse. I I messed with a chick before on ecstasy one time, and 
it's a whole nother level. So that's why, <laughs> no, no, seriously, real talk. It's one of them things where you like, I never tried it ever in my life. I'm not into that. I know it's not smoke weed or nothing. The only thing I might have dabbled in is alcohol here and there through college. But I messed with chicks that was on ecstasy, and it's on a whole nother level. I'm not going to incriminate myself. So, But yeah. I know. I know <laughs> what he's saying. Yeah, it's on a whole nother level. It's so. something that you do, and then you say, nah, I ain't messing with that no more. Yeah. That's, you become addicted to it. You will become addicted to it. Oh. And that's the thing. I think, me personally, I don't have an addictive personality. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I can try stuff and be like, oh, that was amazing, but I ain't doing that no more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some people, they be like, they want it, they chase it. Or stuff, they get that feeling. They be so like, do you think great. that's a thing, like, you know, is that next level high? Because after a while, the weed becomes just so normal yeah. for you. You're and, looking for that and next then, level. And then it's like our culture right now, right? So it's like, if you got somebody who who's making millions of dollars talking about yo, I'm I'm on this lean every day. This is what keep, you know what I mean. They, this is what's keeping them afloat. You thinking like so you got my, talent? Yeah. So the I average that, so the me. average person when he go in the studio instead of just making his track, he like yo, make sure you bring the lean man. Make sure you bring the weed man. Listen, if you gotta bring the coke man, bring him too, cause they wanna they wanna live that lifestyle like they made it already. Yeah, but like then it's that. because. Sometimes a lot of now I'm just I'm not just a stereotype on just rap music. Period. A lot of people get writer's block, so they need that next level. And they hear about Ross, they hear about Wayne, they hear French Montana in the studio with the with the lean and all these down south. Like I, I ain't gonna lie, when it came to that lean and all that stuff, down south trend brought it to New York with us. Cause New York, we was I never heard New York do really on like yeah. lean and all that. So these down south rappers or everybody that's hot, they was on those high end drugs. Now mm -hmm. it's like New Yorkers, New Yorkers is like, yo, yo, I need that lean. I need this because they're like, yo, they got a sound that we need to follow right now. And so that's, that's why a lot of them sounds but, with the draws, but, but yo, it sounds so slow true, because of that. But 50, that's why that's why people's doing that. Even right though now. Fifty was slinging at F and vodka and whatever, Fifty's one of the cleanest rappers. Like he don't smoke or really drink nah, like that. Nah. You know what I'm saying? He made nice like style. a classic. So you, you don't really need that. To get to where you want. On a but side note, I we, I gotta address Fifty Savage Hood with the if he died, he <laughs> oh, died. That Drago. Drago. Oh, I yeah. love it. That, that was, was not necessary. Nah, 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 that was a sad day it. for being the queen, man. You, I love nah, Jamaica Queen. You gotta understand. He was love it. You understand, like your beef. I, you know what? Their yeah. beef. First of all, we hold on, didn't hold on, hold on, hold on. The extent. It's hold on. Like, their beef did. It's rap music. Their beef Mike. did go off. We didn't know did, the extent of Ross. No, but their beef did go off of wax. Like you know, shootouts happen. Fights happen and stuff like that, but my my dude, like, it's been ten years. You want to bigger and better things. Like Fifty, Fifty don't even make money off of music no more. Yeah, it's all about his. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff, you know, yeah. Fifty still do music because he has a passion for it. Yeah, but Fifty don't make. That's not his bread and butter no more. Yeah. Not he to say that he can't still be in that He's game. He's a cancer like me. He's July six. I'm July first. If he dies, he dies. <laughs> nah, that was, no that was love savage. For that, man. that was savage. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, nah, and, and you know, nah, don't nah, get it twisted. So. You know, we from <laughs> Southside, so we know Fifty nah. Cent. We know the G yeah, Unit crew and stuff know, like that. But so I'm definitely nah. not attacking Fifty. What I is he supposed to say? Oh, I hope Ross get well. Leave you know it alone. Nah, nah leave that, that alone. Leave it alone. Boy. This dude's. He I, didn't even say. He just put a picture of Ivan Drago. Maybe he just watched. We all know. Maybe he just watched. We all know. How you know? Because it's the face. That that picture he showed. That's what he dropped. I'm gonna say, if he dies, he yo, dies. Sensei, that was shots fired, bro. <laughs> I, want, yo, I love him to death. I and then, was, but but yo, Ross, funny, Ross is my dude. More of no, we love Ross, but it's just like, that was that was cold, man. Some I things see, gotta let be me, Let me long. bring it back to the topic of what we were discussing. Right? Yeah. So I have a question. Yeah. Like like I said this earlier, the next question is, we used to be the only acceptable drug. Now we take every pill under the sun. Does the pharmaceutical companies have any responsibility? Because another big thing, hear me out, another big thing is like, you know, how we treat pain in real life. Mm -hmm. We treated pain with all of these different, you know, painkillers, oxy. I'm a... Oxycodone, right. Percocet, um, there's so many others. And then that became readily available and pushed. And then, you know, dependency started happening. And then when you know, it's like, yo, think about it. Now you can move around because if cops catch you with pain meds and you could be like, yo, 
I just went to the dentist. I got my tooth pulled. Yeah, yeah. I was in a car accident. I had the stuff like that. Like, this is legal. But this gets you just as high as any of the other controlled substances. That's a fact. I'm so a- do you think the pharmaceutical companies have any responsibility for the because you know now New York State um, is suing certain pharmaceutical companies because of the lax controls they had in the distribution of these controlled substances so I'm going to let you answer you that first let me start with mm-hmm. it yeah. Yeah. they don't have no responsibility to us or anybody else their, their responsibility as pharmaceutical companies is to make money that's what they are they are the legal pushers so to speak, like um, a good friend of mine is a pharmacist. She tells me about these dinners she go to, events she go to, and all they do is try to tell the pharmacist, please push my drug. I got this new drug. You want to push it. You know what I'm saying? And they talk about that, and they try to get it into the pharmacies. Now, yeah, you speak not the companies, but the actual pharmacists, the people that is writing these scripts, mm-hmm. yeah, they have an obligation to their patients and um, the people that they're but, providing. But like you said, but, they put pressure on certain, you know, providers, the doctors, the pharmacists, and stuff they like don't that. Put to pressure is money. It's not pressure. It's money. It's listen. I will, you know, cut you a profit. She told me a story about how some company was ever was, I think it's like sixty dollars a pill for some Viagra or whatever. Um, or, or no, that's how much she could sell it for. But they was gonna sell it to her for like five dollars a pill, oh, wow. something cheap like that. Yeah. So you, it's like, and we'll give you this much of the profit. You know what I mean? So it's just a dirty business. Like people think, oh, because the violence involved in drug dealing in the streets, people was like, oh, I'm so against it, or whatever. But the 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 stuff that goes on in the legal drug world is either as worse, or I mean, as bad or worse than what goes on in the legal drugs. Tell you the truth. So what do you think? You don't think the pharmaceutical companies have any responsibility for what's going on? I don't think the pharmaceutical company has any responsibility. Like he said, I'm to pick back what he said. I, I think what he's saying is 100 percent right. But what another thing is when you are taking these drugs, these drugs have side effects, right? So I had major surgery. I don't want to put out what I had. I had major surgery where it, you know, if I didn't have the surgery, I could have died, right? Mm-hmm. So I was on oxycotton, and I remember when being on oxycotton, like. When I, when I didn't get it on time, I was ready to kill a whole nursing staff because that's how serious. I, after four you days, that much pain. Listen, that much pain. After four days, I literally had to wheel myself off it. So, so being on regular mm. drugs like taking lean and cough syrup and all that, it's a whole different. That medicine cabinet drug is a whole mm. different ball game. Mm. So it's like it's one of those things where you really gotta. Monitor yourself properly and talk to the right people about it because I can easily and then this is personal experience I could easily say that yo I could have been hooked on oxycodone if I didn't tell myself after three four days I'm good. But that's see that's the thing they you know? give you. They yeah, give but, you that but they, in the hospital. But they give me that. You know but what I'm saying? They give you that in the hospital, you, right? I'm not. I'm agree with hundred percent. But also you got to take into effect of when they give you these drugs. Anytime somebody give you medication, you got to ask them the side effects. If they don't tell you the side effects, it. Don't take it because everybody's different, right? So you can't give me a pill and just tell me, oh, yeah, it's going to make me better. No, you got to give me three different scenarios. What's going on? Because I'm going to Google it. You got to tell me something. Yeah. And then I got to hear some, something else. So, so, so it's about, I, I think. I do, I, do, we, I do think the pharmaceutical companies have some responsibility to it because okay. you're the one who bring the, bring the drug to the public. You're the one who's part of the, con- the distribution of the drug. Because, let me play devil's advocate, the same way we had that energy and that, you know, that feeling towards the NRA and how, like, you know, okay, gun laws needs to be saying. changed. Yeah, yeah. And it, we, we go crazy over that because we see the, how victimized that, you know, mm. with the lax drug laws, the lax gun laws and how it's so easy for people to get their hands on guns. We got to have that same energy on how easy and lax it is on the way people to get on drugs. Because guess what? It's not people who have regular ailments that are like, that is a big portion of people who are abusing these pills, but it's getting into the hands of people who, who have no ailments that cause them to have these Well, the these pharmaceutical things. company can't do nothing about Joe Blow, who's not a pharmacist, getting his hands on it and selling it on the street. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But what, to me... They get they list the they list the side effects. The pharmacists are supposed to tell you how to yeah. take the drug, what this can cause, when to take it, whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? It's just like 
for instance, Viagra, right? Yeah. People got to make their own decision. I tell you, you take this Viagra, you need to get that heart on. It's going to give you that heart on, but it might affect your heart. Mm-hmm. That's the fact. Yeah, you know what I'm right. saying? Yeah, yeah, what yeah. you going to do? And you know, it's a crazy thing. Viagra <laughs> wasn't even came out as a drug to make you horny. It was a drug to help with heart and circulation, and it wind up yeah. sending a whole oh. lot of blood to your penis, and it was just like, you know what? what? This will probably make us more money than, exactly. than the circulation. Let's advertise we're, we're, it right. This, another thing I want to say, I'll let you go, go is ahead. just like, because we have to keep that same energy. Just like, think about it. We always complain how we victimize the brown and black people for the distribution of drugs in the inner cities and stuff like that, but the brown and black people don't own the boats that these drugs come in, right? Mm-hmm. And we always say like, yo, you giving Mike and Clifford all this time for selling drugs and stuff like that, but who's Mike and Clifford's plug? Mike and Clifford plug goes unnoticed. We realize knowing the history of the past that even the CIA was involved with helping certain drugs get smuggled in and stuff like that. Oh, Just want some, hey, we'll let you bring drugs in if you help us fight communism against Cuba and stuff like that. And I say that to say this, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's becoming, you know, the users are becoming the victims and the users are becoming the people who suffer from it. But, like, the people who's making money hand over fist, they got to have some kind of responsibility for it, too. We can't just sit there and say, oh, people know what they're doing and stuff no, like that. No. Because, to be honest with you, yes, we all, we all have a say on what we put into our bodies. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. But at the same time, we also... We're, we're under laws and we're under government for a reason. Just like you know how certain foods we've been eating for years, not giving us cancer, not giving stuff like that. You're going to say, oh, well, he should have known that eating this. No, because we have certain responsibility. That's why there's regulations for all of these things. That's a, that's a fact. But, I, I mean, <laughs> but also, but when, you, when you're talking about pharmaceutical drugs and all that, it, it's, very, it's, it's like it's trial and error, right? So... When you when you taking some of these drugs and medication, which you call the pharmacy, he's gonna send it to the person, and it's he's telling you it's a try and error. He's yeah. not telling you it's hundred percent gonna fix you. Medic no. medication no. don't fix you. Medication medication hits the root of the problem and makes you feel Temporary. better. It, it addresses sim- symptoms. Uh, symptoms, exactly. But then secretly somehow uh, yeah. it creates other All symptoms. What would you have so, them do? Well, well, if you since you say they have some responsibility in this. What do you think as the companies who make these drugs are, 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 you know, producing them or what have you? They list the side effects. Yeah, on the commercials, they go yeah, over it real fast. They, 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 have they have a responsibility. They have responsibility. I understand a business purpose is for profit. But the way that they're flooding the market with these things and over distributing these things, they, they, they're, they're ignoring the results of this overpopulation of the drug just for profit. And I know that's how business and capitalism work, but they have some responsibility for it. Just like how we're upset that Nicholas Cruz, the, the crazy kid from Florida a couple of weeks ago, was able to get an A off. This is my thing. Uh, what you even even as hunters. Less? No, but it but, less, but is, is the regulation on how it's distributed and, and how it's readily made available. Okay. And that's why I don't agree with you because I don't think it's their job. They are not the ones that's prescribing it to people. So, it's so the NRA and the gun makers, it. like I made you this. You can't really make I that made, comparison. No, it is because I made this AR-15 for hunting and for military purposes. But Mike, you're brown, so it's not going to happen. But if Mike Winfield was actually a a, a white gentleman, mm-hmm. going, you could go into Walmart and get an AR-15. What what is what is the actual purpose for you to be able to I get an AR fifteen? The two way market of state. Is it? <laughs> but, but but you see what I'm saying? And, yeah. and then they said it. And this the, listen, this is the most real thing they said when it comes to the gun thing. They was like, if every black man decide, hey, today we're gonna buy an AR fifteen, guns yeah. laws will be changed tomorrow. And, and to be honest easy. with you, that's what's kind of bothering me because the drug culture is actually changing the pill because now that it's affecting. Suburban but America. A safe wall is what I'm telling you when it comes to the pills. You're talking about the companies that manufacture this drug. They cannot just say, we're making this drug, putting it in stores and buy it. There's a safe wall. That safe wall is the pharmacist who has to write that script. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, there are some so drugs. You, there are so some you're drugs saying that the you onus is completely the, the onus is completely on the the the, the users, and and there's no 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 no. I'm saying 
it's not completely on. They only have a small majority of that. What's going on? Because at the yeah. end of the day, he's saying this like it's like it's like when you buy in the. Uh, uh, I can't got my uh, hands on no oxy. When listen, it's like, like buying that. you know McDonald's it, ham. It's like buying McDonald's hamburger or whatever. We don't know if it's real or not. Whatever. Boom. Whoever's selling the patties to McDonald's, that's just the whole stuff. It's McDonald's yeah. to say, yes. listen, no, what? But, you know no, what I'm but, saying? Yeah, yeah. You see, yeah, yeah, taking mm. too much of the onus off on the providers and making it more on the users and the consumers. Guess what? It's it's a business, right? So there's regulations for everything. Like if McDon if a McDonald's get caught selling cockroach meat for, for, for hamburgers or something like that. They're going to get in trouble because they have to have inspections. They have to have regulations. You got to say, these pharmaceutical companies are losing lawsuits every day, but the fact that, you know, they have so much powerful people in company, they get hit with $10 million fine, and they're like, well, we made $3 billion off of the drug last year, so that $10 million fine will eat that. We're not even going to fight that. Yeah. Well, let me ask you something, bro. Because if I understand you correctly, let's let's bring it to the street level. Like, I understand what you're saying where the dealers are the ones that's getting, you know, most of the time where they connects are not getting as much. Because first of all, the connects is not, they're not touching it directly. Yeah, they're not getting caught to no be hand seen. to hand. There's no way to be yeah, seen, yeah. So they're harder to catch. But at the same time, if there was no dealer to sell for the connect, then what? And that's what I'm telling you. The pharmacist who writes the scripts to give to the customer, the patient, or whatever, if they're, if they're not there, then I would understand your point better and be like, yo, the pharmaceutical company is coming out with all these drugs and they just throwing them in the streets. You can go on Rite Aid and get, you know, a, a, a Vicodin or Oxy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, but that's not the case. It, but this is it, stuff it, you got to this, this, is, this is a standard <laughs> process. It's not like... It's not like they're giving it to the pharm uh, pharmacist and like, yo, just sit down. The pharmacist now, once he give it to them, that's not his business anymore. Well, if I, listen, if like, like yeah. we're taking this to the streets, if I'm the connect and you my worker, if I'm giving it to you, that ain't my business no more. You could sell it to Cubans, Haitians, Just Puerto bring Ricans, my money back. Just bring my money back. <laughs> oh, they don't got, they, they're not doing, they don't got time to research the other part. The I, research, I think, I the think... research part about it. Is it got to do like he said with the pharmacist because they're writing the prescription? Yeah. So no, what they the, said the, the prescription. Yeah, yeah, both got to understand the pharmacist is just fulfilling the prescription that was sent to them by the doctors. So it's the healthcare system and the pharmaceutical companies. It all, companies all, it all plays a part. It all Spain. plays a part. I'm gonna say this and then I'll move to the next question about it. It's just like this. It's like you know, the U.S. government go harder to go find your connect than it does to to, to answer to the pharmaceutical companies who. Who have lobbyists who's paying them and who's in their pockets. It's so fine. So why not, the NRA not, is so powerful when it comes because to Because they got lobbyists in people's pockets. Exactly. Now now that we have, you know, it's it's affecting suburban America where it's a lot of Johnnies and Timmies who are now strung out on these pills and stuff like that. Now they're saying it's an epidemic. Oh, we have to be crazy. But you know, back when Crack same way was killing so many black and brown people and stuff in, like that. In Harlem in the eighties, everybody was, was on. Oh, everybody was on that on that stuff. It was it, it was a so you people's everybody problem. Was shooting that but now, and but stuff. now that it's affecting people that don't look like us, it's a, it's our problem. It's America's but problem. Now, oh, is, it was a you but now, but now, so that's the ask, drug that but, won't die. Yeah. So let <laughs> me ask this back. last question on this topic, and then we'll move on. Okay. Is the popularity of using recreational drugs a cry for help, or is it just a, to fit in? Like, do you think? That some of this abuse is coming from a for a cry of help, or it's just so it's so cool, and that's why we're over abusing I, um, I answer this question. Right. I think it's to fit in because I, I think a lot. I, I think what's going on, especially, I'm not just gonna say the new gen, um, the new generation, but period people, period. Like I said, if Jay Z say tomorrow and say he was on coke, a lot of people would be doing coke. Yo, Jay Z just caught nine hundred million dollars. Yo, maybe this coke. <laughs> Or make my situation better. It sounds funny, yeah. but people would start doing coke because people. A lot of times, people. A lot of people follow. It, yeah, right? a lot it's of people are not followers. Yeah. A lot of people are not leaders. A lot of people don't stand on their own. So they just trying to find out what the next thing. Especially with social media. If Jay Z said tomorrow, "Yo, you, <laughs> you guys are tripping. You need to get on this coke. <laughs> this, this is why I'm hot." Everybody be like, yo, you see Jay-Z talking about I coke? think it's slightly, I think it is slightly a cry for help. And let me tell you why. Because so many kids feel like they don't have opportunities. So many kids feel like, yo, 
I'm damned if I do, then if I don't kind of thing. Some kids is just like trying to get escape. I'm not saying, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying I'm giving them a pass for it, but some of these kids are popping these pills and stuff like that right. because they have so limited opportunities, so limited examples. They're trying to just get It's not get the out kids, of though, bro. It's not the kids. Let me tell you, and I'm, this is it. I'm going to keep it as real as I can. Yo, life is hard. Life is. is hard. Yeah, it so is. So we all... Not all, but a lot of us need to medicate just to be able to get through a day. Whether you come home and got to have a drink or you, the biggest drug I feel, the thing that's killing the most people is legal. You know what that is? What? That's nicotine. That's the cigarettes. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The cigarettes is killing people every day. Long but term it you is. You can yeah. buy cigarettes like it's and nothing. And you know selfish and about just the their nicotine way of thing? Like, I'll smoke. It's me with the problem. But I'm killing Cliff because Cliff's I'm around me. It, yeah. I'm killing Wifey because Wifey's around me. Said. I'm you killing can't kids. You can smoke in a bar and stuff no more. Second they realize smoke. that. Yeah. They know that. That stuff is no good for you. And that's yeah. probably just as bad as all the drugs that we're talking about, right? But it's legal. That's a fact. It's legal. Just like alcohol. I mean, weed is legal. But, I mean, illegal still in most places. In most places. Because yeah. they say, oh, the effects it has me, blah, 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 blah. Alcohol has killed way more people than weed, yeah. drunk driving, and this yeah, kind of third. Yeah. But it's legal. Why? Because yeah. the profit. And you know, the crazy they want thing you is, you, you keep making this example, and it's so true. I think it's just like the reason why I, I brought the musicians into the, the conversation because the musicians are the influencers, right? Yeah, yeah. Like you said, there's been so many times that Jay-Z has said something and, and it, it changed, follow. changed the culture. Changed, yeah. Like, think about it. A Ghostface had, had um, said this too. Ghostface said he had a mean track with auto-tune on it. But when Jay-Z dropped the track, Death of Auto-Tune, he's just like, he, he's like, damn, I had put money in that track. We was about to promote it. it and I had to kill the track because, yeah. you know, Jay-Z. So I think... Yeah. You know, obviously it's going to be... T-Pain went away. <laughs> yeah. But T-Pain could sing without it, though. Yeah, little, but that's a whole other... Like, but like but the now, wind. I think, yeah. I, now I think... Now I think... And you know what? It, it's tough to say that it's their responsibility. But now I think we got to get the people who's influencers to be like, yo, this drug shit, I mean, like, this ODM pills, crazy shit like that, is, is not cool. Why is it so cool for people? It's, the shit is is it's, it's kind of. You know, but uh, listen, everybody who everybody who's talking about the the, the heavy drug room, they're successful. So if somebody talking about they're successful, it's hard to be somebody be like yo. I'm not on it. I'm not gonna do it. So the next expiring rapper, he like yo. Little Wayne was doing lean for years, and he, this is what he got. He made his best move. Everybody know, and this is this is this is crazy. I'm saying that, but everybody know Little Wayne is best when he's on drugs. Music wise? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm telling you. Said, you said you said a shocker. I, I can't confirm I'm or deny. I'm telling you facts. You listen I'm to the no, because no, Little Wayne because is sober. This is a whack track. No, no, the best. No, like the <laughs> best Little Wayne to me was Carter to Little Wayne, and that was before we knew how popular. No, me let me tell and shit you. Like let me tell you something. It. Carter three. Listen, Little Wayne. And listen, listen, when he listen, started listen, to listen, go down. That's a fact. Little Wayne. Little Wayne. When he's when he when he was on on his drugs. It's on another level. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm bringing notice tonight. When know. he's not on it, the music is okay. The music when he's on drugs is on another level. Some people get better influenced by it. I'm I don't not, know. I'm not well, so I mean, well, we need to make Eminem went through his whole thing on the tracks, through his albums. What is it? Was one of those Eminem on drugs is a bad you know man, though. Eminem, Eminem on drugs? Eminem, drugs. <laughs> Eminem yeah. clean. I'm not really feeling Eminem, Eminem clean. On, Clean is like, yo, bro, maybe you should try because something. Because you know what it is? It's, 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 it's about, you know, David Ruffin from The Temptations. He made some of his best music. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's, move, let's move on nah. to another topic, Nah, but right? you know, it's, it's fine. And this topic, right, is fixing relationships instead of enjoying them. I was talking to my homegirl, Cheryl. Cuzzo. Your cuzzo. Mm -hmm. And then... um. Friends and, to the show. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then I was saying to her, like, yo, so many people in relationships, we spend time or invest so much time and energy in fixing people that we wind up spending more time trying to fix the person than enjoying the relationship that we're in, mm -hmm. than, than building with that person. We spend so much time trying to, like, yo, 
And, and I know a lot of women can relate. It's just like, yo, if you're trying to change this man from being a dog to what's his name, and you spend all this energy, and like, yo, you'll spend years in trying to break him out of this habit, and then sometimes the relationships don't work, or sometimes it's just like, yo, we've been in a relationship for four years, and three of those years I've been trying to get you to stop cheating. You know what I'm saying? And life is so short, you can't get that time back. So the question is, you know, why do we spend so much? So the topic is fixing relationships instead of enjoying them. And the sub-question is, why do we spend so much time trying to fix people we with instead of leaving the relationship? Because okay. I know, like, the, the girl I was chasing after before my wife, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's no disrespect. I didn't think she was bad like that. I just had a connection with her. And I spent so much time trying to like make sense of our connection and trying to stay. And it's just like, yo, I want to waste two, three years of yeah, BS time but... that I could have been on time with someone more special. I always say I thank her because the, the stuff that I went through her made me be able to deal with my wife and like appreciate my wife. But why? So my thing is, why do we spend so much time trying to fix people instead of leaving that relationship? Right, um, I'll right. start off. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we spend um, more time fixing a relationship instead of leaving because let's let's talk about it, right? We all in our thirties, right here. It's hard. Like if me, God forbid, me, me and you, big bro, we both marry. Mm -hmm. God forbid, we get divorced from our wife right, right now. You think we want to start over and learn another chick's ways, being in your thirties, <laughs> that she's gonna give you the same kind of problem? Listen, hold on. I mean, say the same kind of problems that your wife might give me. So. What we do is we go back to the drawing board and we say, say, you know what? Yo, maybe it's me. What can I do to improve it? So we do that part instead of saying, you know what, I'm out. Because somebody somebody a little older, I don't got time. I'm I'm working crazy out. I don't got time uh, to date. I don't I'm not out there no. I can't like go that. to the club. Yeah. I can't I can't go to this next speed there. I can't do that. So I don't <laughs> got the time. So I say, you know what? This is what's going on. Either we're going to go to counseling. I'm going to do whatever it takes because starting over is so hard. And, and I want to clarify. There's a difference between working out problems, right? Because we all have, we always have problem relationships because we're different mm -hmm. people. A man is different, a woman is different, stuff like that. But, you know, sometimes it's just like yo, we'll spend a lot of times trying to, like, this person doesn't want to work. This person is a, a crazy cheater. This person, that's like crazy baggage that this person it's it's within themselves. It's not within our relationship. It's within the core of that person. But well, that's that a bad example. Trying... You start with they don't want to work. <laughs> we no, just, but we just off to a bad. Yeah, story. but yeah, that's what I'm saying. Never. Don't get it twisted, right? Because nah. we we have issues in relationships, move. and don't get it twisted. You have to work the relationship. I've been yeah. in April. I'm gonna be married to my wife in nine years. We would been dating for ten years, Congrats. right? Thank you. And my thing is, we did spend a lot of years working on learning each other ways. So I I don't get I'm not I'm not combating you on learning people's ways and stuff like that. But when you just know a person doesn't even take enough consideration on working on themselves because you are have been their crutch. So just that's like yo So you say yo, why listen. why do we spend so much time trying to make a fix that fix person, that person? Forget our because it's difference between fixing our relationship. Our relationship could be messed up because our our love languages are off. We don't know okay. how to communicate with each other. I'm talking about like a person who just d decided to not work on themselves. Why would we invest that time and that energy? Let me tell you what it is and I, how I see it. And, and okay. I've had a lot of experience, yeah. um, many failures. In, uh, <laughs> now you had many good ones too. I have good ones, but yeah. ultimately it's many failures. And, yeah. and I learned from all of them. And I realized I learned more about myself. And it's like what I try to do is I try to mold them to me. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, you got to accept somebody for who they are, what they're about, you know, whatever connected you to them, attracted you to them, and made you want to get further along with them. But at the same time, you want somebody who fits you best. Yeah. So what happens is, if you know yourself that well, you're trying to say, well, I, you know, I want you to understand me a little better, and I want you to appreciate me in this way. And in doing so, you kind of, it seems like you're trying to change them, mm -hmm. but it's like, that's not what you're doing. You're just trying to find a way where y'all can connect more. Yeah. Now, that example about some things you just can't accept. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing. And I think if you know your point of, well, 
I'm going to try to work with you and we can build something together. But these things I won't accept. Mm -hmm. Most of the time with women is I won't accept him cheating. You know, he can't be out there cheating and whatever. But once you get there, you you can do something. That's what it is. It's not about changing. It's about let's let's grow together. I got to combat something you said. And it's just like, you know, being a man in my 30s, God forbid, if I don't. Yeah. Me and my wife we don't all work in our out. Thirties about no, but it, yeah. I'm saying, if me and my wife don't work out and stuff like that, to me, to be honest with you, where I'm at in life, I've learned myself more. I know, I know what makes more of work. I know what kind of time more of is on now. That to me, I would spend less time. Like to me, I was more patient in my twenties because I was still trying to figure out who I was. Mm-hmm. Now in my thirties. I don't got that kind of time. So it's just like, you show me signs that you're not with the program or we don't got a vision together, it'd be easier for me to drop you because I know other people in our 30s, other people in our 30s who's on that time we're trying to build and stuff like that, they're not wasting that kind of time. They're not playing that kind of game. You could go ahead and... But like like I said, right, a lot of times when you fix in relationships and... You got stuff invested, so you might have nine, ten years with a person. It ain't. It's not. It, it's easier said than done, right? You could say that's the thing with females. Sometimes, oh, I always see a female tell, "Oh, if he cheated, I'm out." You not out, ma. You invested <laughs> ten years of your life with this man, cause you need, now you got to figure out the next Joe Blow. He might do the same thing. Oh, if you got so kids. now, and then, then now you, you got, got kids. kids, and so now, now you got to listen. Starting over in in, in in your 30s, it's so hard. Even mm-hmm. as a man and a woman, I'm not just speaking from the man perspective, because it's a, it's a lot of research you got to find out. So a lot of times we try to fix the problem, even if the problem is kind of bad. It's like a woman who a, a woman who's getting uh, in an abusive relationship. She might stay with him because she knows he's financially invested. She's been with so many bums throughout the years, mm-hmm. and now she got a good man who's making millions of dollars. She stays with him. to so say he kicking her ass? He, he, listen. A lot of times it happens because she's like, you know, he's going to change eventually. She thinks it's her. Yeah, no, she don't understand because she doesn't want to start over. But then also me- they can make bad decisions because when you get older, you don't want to spend as much time learning That's somebody. A fact. That's a fact. Instead, you just more jumping and assuming that, oh, this is good. Let me keep it 100. I'm going to say something that y'all probably going to be like, no, that's not true. And then you got to think about it. There's no one. In any relationship that you know of, that cheating, just cheating itself, breaks up that relationship. Men and women. It's cheating alone doesn't break up relationships. Because you want to know why? If you were happy, I mean happy out your ass in la-la land, and then you find out that the person cheated, but you, you never was made to feel crazy, you was never made to feel suspect and stuff like that, it hurts you. you like, damn, I never would have thought that stuff like that. And then you start thinking and stuff like that, and then you're like, you know what? That's how certain people work it out. This, even as a man, you, you think it to yourself like, like, boom, I found out my wife is cheating. I'm going to leave, and it's not because of that one incident of cheating, because that hurts my ego. It's the fact that, you know, all the times that I was made to feel suspect, all the times I wasn't feeling right, that's what makes you leave. That one cheating incident doesn't change the world if, if the person yeah, secures right. you. It's, it's, it's the it's, beginning it's, of the it's end, It's no. the beginning It's end. the beginning that, of the end. That's the, that when you find out the cheating part might take the cap off the bottle. You understand? Yeah. But, but it was not, something it's building up that. already it's, there. It's, 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 the, the cheating part, what it leads to is, other things that you was already frustrated about. So now that you you got the outlet to say, oh, I'm go- I'm I'm out of here. You're gonna take it. But trust me, starting you know, over. I'm not gonna lie. I'm ma- I've been married for four years. I've been together with my wife for ten years. We met together as k- basically kids. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now we got our own kid. I, it's it's so hard because I'm like, I'm not the same person ten years ago because I have more patience. I respect her more. You know, and and then certain things I gotta respect her feelings, she and vice versa, and I gotta talk to her because it's a different program now. We got this little one. I can't That's just be the like, key. yo, I'm you out. Just said talk to him. I gotta like, talk the, the to. The only him. way you can get past something like, say, for instance, a cheating, and, and, and that would normally break up a relationship, even though it's more to it. Um, you gotta communicate. You gotta communicate. You have to you communicate, communicate after that, and, and, and it can be. Built back together. That's the only way the trust is going to be reestablished. That's, That's the yeah. only way. You know what I'm saying? So if y'all, if she's so upset or he's so upset, whatever, afterward of the cheating that y'all not communicating, 
Yeah. And talking to each other, then you just might as well be done with it. Mm -hmm. but, so let me, let me go ahead. ask this because we're we coming short on time. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been holding on to a damaged person? Like I said, I, I, I wasted so much time. And I'm not going to say that the girl was damaged, right? I just, we, our situation wasn't a cold situation. We didn't have good communication. And in my head, she had shared some, some, something to me about what happened to her when she was younger. And I wanted to protect her so mm. badly that I ignored bullshit because I'm just like, yo, there's something wrong with her. I need mm. to protect her so I kind of rolled on. And now I look at myself like, yo, you were such a clown. Like, to me, I don't got that kind of time. So, obviously, with my wife, I built something over 10 years. It's something yeah. different. Yeah. But if I'm just dating someone and then they're doing mm -hmm. bullshit and I'm just like, yo, I value myself for my time because to me, I'm racing now. Now that money's not my passion anymore, success mm -hmm. and legacy and, 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 and leaving a mark is my passion. So it takes time to get to those things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because money, you can make a bag. You can have a year yeah. where you made $3 million and then you can have a year where you didn't work. You make nothing, but you're yeah. still good either way, right? Because mm -hmm. of money comes in when it goes. Yeah. But that passion, that legacy is something that you chase that you have to continue to build on. So have you ever spent time holding on to a damaged person? I'll let let Mike talk. Okay, Mike, Mike, yeah. Mike got some shit in his yeah, life. Yeah, Mike, Mike got I, a book coming I out. I say because I am the damaged person. <laughs> mm, that's deep. I am the damaged that's person. Deep. And that's deep. The, let him, let him elaborate on that. There's few women that, um, if they only knew, like they didn't really have a chance with me or us, rather. So do you want to apologize to these women now I that do, you, I you registered that you damaged? You got the platform. Go I ahead, apologize man. to all my past loves. You know, I gave you some great times. I hope I gave you some amazing memories. But you never had a chance, ma. And it's not because <laughs> of you. It's because of me. I'm like, proud of you I because the conversations we had recently, yeah. it, it it just kind of like, to hear I you say that, it makes sense. And I still, not I'm not that effed up now. I'm doing better. You know what I'm saying? But I was at a point a lot of times where I didn't know exactly what I wanted or what made me happy. And if you don't know that, you are doomed in a relationship. Bingo. That's a fact. We, we, we That's a fact. <laughs> you are doomed. Because 100%. the person you would, their goal is to try to make you happy. Yeah. And, and, and they can't make you happy because you yourself don't know yeah, what, makes what makes you happy. You, happy yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, the biggest lesson I learned in my particular marriage was I, I was spending so much time trying to make my wife happy, right? Mm -hmm. That I was doing things that was making her frustrated. And I said to, I said to myself, you know what? You got to love and respect this person. But now I need to start chasing the things that make me happy. And it made me concentrate on like, yo, once I started focusing on things to make myself happy, I was less, you know, not trying to please her, but I was more like, yo, my actions reflected better to her because, you know, mm -hmm. I, I was happy and I was able to understand like, and yo. she likes seeing you happy, so. No, that, but I was able to realize like, yo. Focus your energy on working on things that you can be happy and then you can contribute to that other person. Have you ever held on to a damaged person longer than you should have? I got to take you back on Mike. I was the person doing the damage. And when I was, so do you want to apologize? Take, I, take this 30 seconds I, to spit a freestyle. No, I'm not going to apologize because <laughs> at, oh, no, no, at no. that time I was in Goomer. Andrew Bynum, just another body. Hey, A.B., yeah, Andrew Bynum, A another body. A.B., <laughs> and just another body. That, but that was when I was young or whatever. But you know what it is? I realized, like, some of the times, you know, we, do, we, we hold on to people and we do certain things because through our experiences, right? Mm -hmm. So me getting older, I realized I'm like, yo, damn, I was... I was <laughs> a lot of girls dirty, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I made them feel like we was doing something, but I knew we wasn't doing. We're not going that way. I even had like in the past, I even had chicks tell me like, "Yo, we could do this, we could do this." When we, I'm like, "Ain't that the most awkward Ma, feeling?" Like, Ma, when we, you like, yo, Ma, Ma, I'm about to cut you yo, in a little yo, bit, and you is, up there planning yo, the rest you, of Yeah, you on a six month contract. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You you, you about to expire. You, you know what? I want to. You a six I want to take a time contract. out to apologize to myself, <laughs> right? Because I want to. You're like your mom. You, you played your, yourself. no. You played yourself. Spending so much time and energy on people who wasn't worth it that I think I would be further <laughs> along in life. But you was a like poet. Poets you know, do but that you know, sometimes. like the friend zone kind of thing. Like like sometimes the friend zone is a comfort zone. Like mm -hmm. you know, it's a crazy thing, right? It's just like this. You know. 
Men always, you know, certain men who are in the friend zone complain about being in the friend zone. But you stayed in the friend zone because it was comfortable. Yeah. You seen the signs that it wasn't a go, and you said, you know what? It's harder to just walk away, so I'm going to chill here hoping things nah. change. And you waste your time, nah, so you I played yourself. I had a different mindset in the friend zone, man. When I was in the friend zone, I was like, you, you, what do you say? You keep your friends close, keep your enemy closer. She was my enemy. And I was getting close. <laughs> so you was ready so to was drop like, that revenge. I was, listen, I was in the friend zone. And as soon as she dropped her defenses, I was going to attack. My man, my man, Sensei, a.k.a. Stevie J. Just, just Stevie J. Was, a.k.a. Stevie J. But so no. let me ask this last question on the topic, then we'll move on to the next topic, right? Okay. Is it better to have the wrong one than no one? To be honest with you, I'd rather be with nobody than the wrong person, right? Because while you're with nobody, you get to reflect. You get to realize, like, yo, this is what I want. This is what I need. So many people spend so much time with the wrong person. You get 20. Let me just say one thing and then you go. It's so many people who get divorced after 20, 25 years, right? And it's just like, you know, you spent 20 years of your life pretending or 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 f- filling the gaps or telling yourself this is what this person meant to do this is what the person means and that shit is ugly after 20 years when you walk away with nothing or you walk away with just scars no good memories and so many people that's do that that's key right there that's a key but I'll get back to that Go you know ahead. what I'm saying but is what you said about is, so is it is it better to have the wrong one than no one I'm gonna explain that right so no a lot of times people stay with the wrong one because, yo, it's scary to be alone. I don't care what you say. If right now we both married, he he's in a relationship. I'm a divorced thing. He's in a, he's in a relationship. You I was in, divorced. I'm okay, just saying. But, I was married yo, at one point, too. Yo, I'm not afraid of the commitment. I right know, there. but no, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's just like, it's, it's tough to be alone, man. Let me tell you something. And... I ain't never struggled with ladies. I ain't no cocky drink, but I know how to pull them when I was out there. I'm married now. Yeah. So I ain't never, I, no, real talk. I ain't, I ain't never struggled with ladies. Ladies ain't never been no struggle because mm-hmm. if you ain't, if you know how to pull them, you're going to pull them. That's, that's never been a struggle. But that dating world, after a while, that shit get whack. So, so a lot of times you stay with the wrong one because you're like, you know, at least I know she's going to be there. When it's when it's all said and done, she gonna beat it. That's why you stay with. That's why. That's why sometimes people stay with the wrong one. Even the guy, you might not fulfill your woman sexually or whatever. Boom, but she like, you know what? I'm gonna stay with this brother after have my fun because I know he's gonna beat it. Eventually, yo, when you get you get to a certain age, you don't want to be alone because it's so you scary. Ra- you saying I rather you, be with the, the wrong one. I rather than, no. This is no I'm, I'm saying I'm saying this. I'm saying this. A lot of times, people stay with the wrong ones because they're afraid to be alone. No, we we know that. I I, I just need you to give oh, me the no, answer. Oh no no no! I don't. I, I can't be with the wrong one long term to the point where it's gonna deteriorate me because eventually that's what's gonna happen. I can't be with the wrong. This one. is summed up in the phrase: "It is better to love and loss than to have to never, never love at all." Oh, that's so. Nice. I would say yes. It's okay to be, to with, be the with the wrong one. one, but going back to memories. I feel like life is about moments. That's that's, that's what I feel like. Yeah. I mean, life is all about moments and memories you create. So when I'm with somebody, even with those chicks who I knew I didn't have a future with, I was out to make memories with them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We was going to do it up. We was gonna have, you going to remember this night. Yeah. I ain't going to be your husband, but you ain't never going to forget <laughs> me. <laughs> to me. To be honest with you, and Listen. I think it, it took me a while to get to this point, I think being with the wrong one just to have somebody to you know, be on the other side of the bed to, to, to quote-unquote placate yourself, it's a temporary fix. To me, it's the same thing of being addicted to drugs because that drugs make you feel like, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna make it to the next day. I'm going to ignore all the shit that's really going on in my life, but this drug is going to make me feel good. That, but then again, you don't know no, it but in the moment that time, either. No, you but don't I'm know saying, it. You, you in the moment. You know what I'm, I'm saying? saying I once you recognize it's the wrong one, and people recognize that they're with the wrong one and still say, still "I'd stay. rather be by myself trying to figure shit out." Trying to, I think the biggest mistake people make in relationships is thinking that that person in the relationship is gonna make you better. It's gonna make you more whole, make you more happy. If you don't, yeah. if you don't know how to answer those questions for yourself, it's just two people. It's two people who don't know where they're going, giving each other directions. That's a fact, <laughs> but you know what it is. 
I'm telling you right now, a lot of the times it, 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 it's scary because nobody wants to be alone. You could be a play all you want. You could be banging all the chicks. You could have all the money in the world, whatever, boom. When it's all said and done, when I'm 70 years old and I got my Haitian slippers in the backyard, I want to have somebody I could sit down and read the book and, yeah, and lotion on my At that feet. point, but like, no, I, but I don't love her, but she treat me right. No, so no, I but what, I, what, I'm say, what, I'm, what I'm saying is it, it's scary because a lot of times you stay with the wrong one because you're afraid to be alone, period, and you don't want to start over. I'm a danger to myself when I'm alone. I don't know. No, I, I don't. Just, uh, starting over is hard. All right, so we, we, we're coming short in time, so All I right. want to get to the next and last topic. The last topic is called South Africa reparations. So recently, South Africa is doing a thing where they're going to white farmers and certain settlers and be like, listen, the way I got this land was illegal. illegal. So now it's time for you to bounce. Give it up. We're not giving you no money for this land because you, you didn't pay no go, money. Colonizer. <laughs> colonizer. <laughs> it's not your time. <laughs> and so <laughs> and it's crazy, right? Because you feel bad for them for a second, but then you kind of yeah. think about all the slavery stuff. And like, yo, keep that same energy of when you got this land illegal, you're going to find yourself a new path. Well, they didn't. And that's the thing. It was their the ancestors. ancestors who passed it on to them. <laughs> so, yes, I, no, I'm all with you, bro. I want them to give it up. So I don't have no real sympathy for them, but I understand why they like, well, you know, this is my land. My daddy, my grandpa gave right, so me this land. So let me ask the question, and then I'll let you get it in. In South Africa, the mostly, predominantly black government is forcing the white farmers whose ancestors stole the land off of the farm. Is this right or wrong? I I think it's... I'm very conflicted. I think it's kind of wrong because, you know, the um <laughs> the descendants didn't necessarily get their hands dirty. But it kind of make you feel like you see it don't feel so good when the rabbit got the gun now. You know what I'm saying? So, you started to answer, I'm let Cliff answer then go. go is it right or is it wrong? Um I don't really know how to answer that question because it, it is... It's wrong, it's, but it kind of feel right it's to me. Wrong, you know what I'm saying? It's wrong because, you know, due to that, like, you know, the, in the past of certain circumstances. But, you know, I, I guess they like, listen, I, I'm taking what's mine. Yeah. I'm taking what's mine. Because what so people fail control, to realize so. is the biggest reason on wealth, distrib wealth distribution or, or, or wealth disparity in this world is because people of... Caucasian descent have had wealth transferred to them and people of other descents haven't had wealth transferred to them. So that's why we have this big disparity. So in instance, African Americans are hardly are never going to, I was at a panel, right? Uh, Cause you know, for the company I worked at, I was at a mm -hmm. panel and they were saying how the wealth that's passed on from Caucasians, from minorities is seven times more Caucasians passed mm. seven times more worth of wealth to what we get. Minorities yeah. pass on. We pass so on you, debt. So you in a you in a losing race already. We so pass on debt. so South Africa, wrong or not, is kind of changing the game on that. Bro, Africa is the motherland. Okay, <laughs> go back to Wakanda. <laughs> no, but South Africa, tell you the truth, it's crazy. There's a lot of Caucasian people. You may not believe it in South Africa. There's a lot of white people out there. But the thing about it is, I I, I seen a stat. Right after apartheid, um, going back to around 1994, 85 percent of this farmland was owned by white pe white people, white folks. Okay, and till today, where now it's only 72 percent. There hasn't been a large drop, right? So how is it y'all still have this much farmland, you know, in, in a country like South Africa, where if you think of Africa, you think of black people, you yeah. think of, you know what I'm saying? It's just crazy. So I just need you to verify how you got. Like, if you can show <laughs> that, that you spent got it. four million dollars and bought this land, then and keep it. it. If you and can't show it. that, you got to go. All right, you so the next go. question is, right, because we're coming up. Should Africa do this in more countries? And, and offer people from the diaspora land for them to come back home. So what I mean is, like, you see how 
us stranded people in America, us people in Haiti and all different islands and stuff like that. We all are descendants of Africans who got displaced due to the slave trade. So now that they're doing this like, yo, you got to run this land, do you think they should offer people from the diaspora to come back home and give them a chance to either purchase this land or be given this land. Sort of like the 40 acres and the yes, mule. Yes, yes, absolutely. Go to DNA.com and find out what, what? what land was yours. <laughs> and you should go back and, what and tribe? take that land. Listen, what, what I, you... I just feel it's right. No, no, no. Because it, it, it really irks me like now. Oh, how can you do this? How can you do this? Y'all got, and we, we can focus on America now. 400 years of free labor. Yeah. Free wow. labor, right? That built this country. Yeah. And I think one day those what they say, the hens are gonna come home to roost or whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So eventually that's gonna come back around here. And I think this is a good example of when the hens come home to roost. Bruce, I was thinking exactly. you know what I'm saying? What what do you think? I mean, it, that's a tough that is just a tough scenario. He, he's he being so no, PC. No, I'm not being Don't get that. it twisted. No. I I'm, there's so many people. White people that I love, and it's not a, a racist thing, but it's just like, yo, it's it's a fair thing, right? Because but we've why, been. I, my my be thing, I gotta ask you, what you call it, not to cut you off. Why why are they doing this now? Because now they have the power and able to do it. Yeah. You okay. you think you think a lot of people Eventually would accept slavery? If they, you know what I'm saying? So Eventually okay, no, I just no, I just wanted justice. to see why. So now? the last thing I'm gonna say. Hmm. And then we're gonna we're gonna end the show. Is are these white farmers victim, or is this kind of like karma to the world? You kind of said that. Oh, it's, de it's, it's, it's definitely it's definitely karma. It's definitely karma. Mm -hmm. It's like it's basically people standing up for saying, "Listen, I'm standing up for what's right to to, to me, and I'm coming for it. If you don't got paperwork for it, you got to give me back what's mine." The fact That's that it. you were able to just flow and free and succeed yeah. in the land of dark people mm -hmm. so comfortably. I can't go to name the whitest place ever or Russia Dutch, or whatever. Uh, Switzerland. I can't go there Denmark. and be comfortable and succeed and feel like this is no. Yeah. But you were able to go to the motherland and we accepted you because we we are the most accepting and loving people, and that's part of our problem. I, I, I that's just how want we those those who you know? feel so crazy about the situation. Imagine me going to Russia and be like, yo. This is me right now. My head will get cut off <laughs> within the first five minutes that I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's been the history of what's been going down. We are so accepting. I do feel bad for the people yeah, whose hands yeah. aren't bloody who this happened to. Give up that farm now. <laughs> but at least you're able your to leave with your life <laughs> and yeah, figure it out. Exactly. Just like how we've been having to figure it out for the last Two, mm -hmm. three, four hundred years. Of course. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's the end of another fun episode, guys. I'm yeah. so appreciative of you guys doing your thing. Cliff, you want to give our shout out before we head out? Um, I just want to shout out my family and friends, and also I want to say just keep working hard because handouts will not get you nowhere. And you know, keep positive people around you because when you give that negative energy, you're gonna start acting that way, and then good things don't happen to you. So, if you can help, help somebody. Um. Shout out to all the fam, uh, friends, loved ones. You know, I just do what I do. Work hard every day. Take care of my minions. But I do want to say, it, it, it bugged me out because I was talking to a friend of mine. We had this little nor'easter, and I heard people at work complaining. Oh, I didn't have power for the night. I didn't have power. for. I still don't have power, whatever, whatever. Yo, I, more than half the people in Puerto Rico still don't have power. Still don't have power. Yeah. So That's when you're tough. complaining about that, you think about them. That's all I want to say. Like. Mm -hmm. I just want to say, like, you know, Black History Month is over, but it still, does, it still doesn't give you an excuse to stop learning. I want you to keep learning, keep trying to build, support people that you can. And fact. don't be driven by envy or driven by revenge. Driven, be chase your legacy because that lasts much longer. And we out. Peace. <laughs>